Hey everyone, welcome back to Engineering Education. For this next problem, we have three positive charges here. Charge number one is a 5 microcoulomb charge. Charge number two is a 10 microcoulomb charge. And charge number three is also a 10 microcoulomb charge. And here we're asked to determine the magnitude of the net force on the 5 microcoulomb charge exerted by these two 10 microcoulomb charges. So, as always, pause the video, give it a shot, and we'll go over the answer in a bit. So to go ahead and solve this, we can go to the FE handbook, and on the very first page of the electrical and computer engineering section, we have the formula for force right here, and that will give us the force on charge 2 due to charge 1. So I'm going to write that on the next page. Okay, so the general formula is that force is equal to Q1 times Q2 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. And sometimes you'll see that rewritten as K Q1 Q2 divided by r squared, where K is Coulomb's constant and it's equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught and that is 8.99 times 10 to the 9, which we'll just write as 9 times 10 to the 9. So in order to determine the force exerted on the 5 microcoulomb charge, we need to determine all of the distances. So as we can see that this force formula has this r squared term, so we need to determine the distance between this 5 microcoulomb and this 10 microcoulomb charge here. So that's this distance here. And that's done simply by doing a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And this is the square root of 2. And what we want to do here is we want to determine the force exerted on the 5 microcoulomb charge by this particle number 2. And we want to determine the force on this 5 microcoulomb charge due to particle 3. So these are positive charges, so they're going to repel. And so due to particle 2, the 5 microcoulomb charge will feel a force in the negative y direction. And for the particle 3, it's going to feel a force along that line. And so we're going to denote these forces here. We'll call this one F12. And we'll call this force F13. And we want to determine the net force of these two forces. And so that'll be something like this. And we'll call this force F net. And we want to determine the magnitude of F net. And the way we would do that is we find the force F12 and the force F13. We break them up into their individual X and Y components, add up their components, and then find the magnitude of F net. We'll start with F12. So F12 is equal to Coulomb's constant K times Q1 times Q2 divided by R squared, where R is only 1, so 1 squared is 1, and Coulomb's constant is 9 times 10 to the 9 the charge of particle 1 is 5 microcoulombs and the charge of particle 2 is 10 microcoulombs so when we solve that we get 0 0.45 newtons similarly we do that with f13 which is k Q1 times Q3 this time, 
divided by r squared, which is 9 times 10 to the 9. Charge of Q1 is 5 microcoulombs. And the charge of particle 3. And that gets divided by the distance between them, which is the square root of 2 squared. So solving for this, we get F13 is 0 0.225 newtons. So that gives us the magnitude of each individual force. And now we've got to break these up into their components in order to add up their components and then ultimately get F net. So we'll start with F12, its x component. Now if we put the 5 microcoulomb charge at the center of a coordinate system. We'll do that now. Let's see. Let's use black. We'll pretend that's in the middle there. That is the x component, the x direction, and up and down is the y direction with the 5 microcoulomb charge in the center, 0, 0. So the x direction is nothing, right? So it's zero. So F12 only has a y direction. F12 has a y direction of minus 0 0.45 newtons. So those are the components of the force 1, 2. And to find the components of force 1, 3, we need to find this angle here. We'll call that angle theta. And so we want to find this component here, which is the y component. So that's F1, 3, y. And we want to find the x component, which is this component here, which is F, 1, 3, x. And if we have that theta value, we can use trigonometry and figure out the values of those components. So in order to find theta, we can do that using just basic geometry, using geometric relationships. That angle there is also equal to theta. And this is a 90, 45, 45 triangle, giving this angle here 45 degrees and therefore theta is also 45 degrees. So I'll write that up top here. Theta is 45 degrees. But that's not all. If we recall that in a coordinate system we have the way I remembered it was all students take calculus and so in the first quadrant all of the trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, are positive. In the second quadrant, only sine is positive. In the third quadrant, only tangent is positive, meaning that sine and cosine are negative. And in the fourth quadrant, only cosine is positive. And so our angle here, if we look at our the direction that our F13 vector is pointing at, it's in actually, it falls into the third quadrant. So that means that our sines and cosines are actually going to be negative. So switching back to green, we have that F13x, again using trigonometric relationships here, is equal to F13 times the cosine of theta, which equals 0 0.225 times the square root of 2 over 2. So that's the cosine of 45 degrees. But remember, these are all going to be negative, right? So this is going to be negative, and this is going to be negative. And when we do that, we get that the x component is negative 0 0.159. And we can do that the same thing for the y component. 
only this time instead of cosine theta we use sine theta f13 sine theta is equal to same thing negative 0 0.225 square root of 2 over 2 and so it's the same thing negative 0.159 now we can add up the components so let's see we have the x component here that we can add to this component here and then we can add this y component with this y component and I'll keep that same color f net is equal to let's see f 1 2 x plus f 1 3 x so that'll give us the x component and then the y components f 1 2 y plus f 1 3 y and when we add those up respectively we get f 1 2 x is 0 plus f 1 3 x is negative 0 0.159 and now we add up the y components here so it's negative 0 0.159 plus negative 0 0.45 which is going to give us a larger negative and that gives us negative 6 well negative 0 0.609 and then to find the magnitude so that's the x component and the y component added up only using vector notation and to find f net finally the magnitude is just these two components squared and square rooted right so this is going to be negative one zero point one five nine squared plus negative zero point six oh nine squared and this whole thing square rooted and then when we do that we finally get our answer 0 0.63 newtons and so that's our magnitude if you wanted to find the direction you can do the arctan of this y component divided by this x component and that'll give you an angle to find the direction so as you can see this is actually a pretty complicated problem there's a lot involved a quick and dirty way of doing this if this is a multiple choice question is to not deal with these components and just add up f12 and f13 and you get roughly you know 0 0.675 it looks like and if it's a multiple choice question then i guess if you wanted to save time and not go through all these component analysis then you can just say it's roughly equal to you know this 0 0.63 but doing it out this way with component analysis this is the the correct way of doing it some of the tricky parts involved here are not mixing up your signs right so this is all relative to the 5 microcoulomb charge that we say is located at the origin and everything is relative to that particle Right, so all the forces are with respect to that charge. So definitely watch out for signs. So one of the tricky things to, to keep in mind is knowing where, in what quadrant, sine and cosine and tangent are positive and in what quadrants they're negative. So I, I use this relationship here to remember if we start from the first quadrant and work counterclockwise to the fourth quadrant, then 
I used the mnemonic, all students take calculus to, to remember that. If you don't want to remember those signs, then what you can do is find this angle here, which would be 180 plus d theta of 45 degrees, giving you theta is equal to 225 degrees. And then you can plug in theta is equal to, you know, 225 degrees, and that'll that'll take care of the signs for you. That's another way of doing it as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. Please subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Until then, enjoy engineering.